You know what the difference is between you and me? I make this look good. Are you ready? Are you ready? Are you ready? Oh, hello everybody and welcome to this week's 5 Minute Friday. A little bit different as you can well see. Now, before we dive into this video, if you are new to the channel, then please hit the subscribe button at the bottom. Keep yourself up to date with everything Biking Buddies. So without further ado, let's dive into this week's 5 Minute Friday. Okay, so what are we up to this week? Well, very straightforward. Over recent weeks and months, the ride out videos that I and others post on Facebook Biking Buddies have become increasingly popular, and that's absolutely brilliant, and long may that continue. But it did lend me to thinking on the last few rides that we've did, which have been comfortably above 10 bikes up, that maybe I should just do a little bit of a review video on group riding. Hints and tips, more etiquette than anything. Now, my children have very kindly been beavering away in the background. My daughter prepared the road for us, and my son has loaned us his beautiful diecast bikes and a couple of his diecast cars. So, let's dive into this group riding tutorial, hints and tips, group riding etiquette video. Okay, so the first thing I want to demonstrate to you is just general open road group riding road position. Now you will see the four bikes in formation here. You can see from the aerial shot how they're positioned. We have position one being closer to the near side, position two, which nobody is occupying, which is the center of the lane, and position three, which is close to the offside of your own lane direction of travel. And I will refer to position one, position two, and position three periodically throughout this video. When we look at these bikes head on, you can see why they are formatted or why they're in this kind of grid-like offset pattern. And the reason being is the bike at the front that is the lead bike, he ultimately has complete clear vision in front of him, irrespective of whether he's in position three, two, or position one. However, the second bike, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, and so on, they need to position those selves so that fundamentally they have good clear line of sight as far as possible. Now clearly these bikes are bunched a little bit too close together purely for the editing purposes. However, bike number two here, he is positioned in position one. He has good line of sight down the inside of bike number one. Likewise, when we position ourselves in bike number three, he is now in position three. He's got a wider field of vision because bike number one is a good two bike lengths in front of him, if not more. As I say, these bikes have further together than they would ordinarily be if you were riding in real life. So that covers the visual side of things. There are a couple of safety elements as well. If bike number one were to brake excessively or unexpectedly, bike number two clearly has an escape road up the inside of bike number one. However, if bike number one isn't braking, isn't doing anything untoward, but does run over some gravel, then the chances are that that gravel will ping off to the sides of bike number three or fall short before it hits bike number three. If bike number two, for example, were in the identical position, and when we look at this from the head on camera perspective, you'll see that everybody is now in line of fire. Bike number one still retains total clear vision of the road ahead. Bike number two, less so, three, four, five, and so on. Any debris that bike number one flicks up goes directly into the line of travel of bike number two, three, four, and so on and so forth. Equally, if bike number one were to break excessively or unexpectedly hard, bike number two, could potentially impact on that. There's your reverse shockwave, and before you know it, you have a multiple bike accident. So, first ride etiquette, safety tip and hint number one is whenever you are riding in group formation, whether you're riding two bikes as a group or you're riding 20 bikes as a group, always try as much as possible to offset and stagger your position. Now, in our next clip, I want to cover the classic overtake. A couple of things to bear in mind here. We still have our bikes offset, as you can see, towards the back end of this group. And we've got a couple of ready family saloons, the average day kind of car that you come across every day when you're riding. So, I'm not going to go into the overall safety dynamics of how you overtake. I'll leave that entirely up to you. This is more about the etiquette when you are group riding. So... First and foremost, when it's safe to do so, bike number one, and we'll let it be our jigsaw this time, they don't get to go in front very often, um, but bike number one, he would ease out of his lane, position three, on the opposing lane, and he would have a look down 
to see if it is safe to execute the maneuver. If it is, he would execute. If it isn't, he has opportunity to move back into the slot that he's just remained. Now the group etiquette element of this overlaps because if he moves into position one, two or three on the opposing lane and our Honda Fireblade, because they do have a tendency of doing this, he shoots up to the inside presuming that the Jixxer is now going to make the move. Should there be any traffic coming on and the Jixxer decides to bail out, well now he doesn't really have anywhere to move because our Honda Rider has taken that slot. So the group etiquette element is back to our original riding positions within our road positioning the suzuki would look out have a look the honda fundamentally he doesn't do anything he stays exactly where he is um in order to leave this space here totally clear as an escape zone should the suzuki need it now once the suzuki decides to commit he follows his maneuver through to completion once he is alongside or more than halfway past the vehicle that he's overtaken then the honda can move forwards up into position three following the car now clearly again you would never be this close in reality the suzuki continues his maneuver clearly he's going faster than the overtaken vehicles and his overall objectives was to drop into this center slot here so he just gently engine brakes matches his speed with the direction of travel of everything else and he eases himself into this slot now the group fundamental element here of etiquette is he would ease across to position one now you can clearly see from the camera above he leaves all of this space wide open so that if the honda rider should he decide to do the overtake, he performs that same manoeuvre, he overtakes the vehicle, and very clearly he's got a space to move into. Now immediately after that overtake, the traffic would by default ordinarily ease out a little bit, the positions would reverse, and there we go back to our riding slot. Now what not to do, if we rewind these bikes back, what not to do is for Bike number one to perform the overtake, as we've just described, but instead of moving into position one, he moves into position two and stays where he is. Bike number two following up behind, he eases out, makes the commitment, goes for the overtake, gets to this point, and all of a sudden, uh-uh, all of this space is occupied by our rather selfish jigsaw rider. So, this is the group etiquette element. When you do an overtake, the lead bike overtaken out of the number that are following, always moves over to the near side to leave a space for your friends to follow. Okay, now another topic that comes up quite readily in group situations when you're riding in a group, be it two, three, four, five or more, is that element of filtering. Now the jury's always out on filtering. These are my personal opinions. They aren't hard and fast. I'm not telling you to do these things. If you decide to do it, that's entirely up to you, only if you're comfortable to do so. Now when I filter, I always filter slowly. I don't believe in filtering fast, um, purely because for me, life is just too short and the family need me at home far more than I need the adrenaline rush of doing 50 60 mile an hour through cars but it's personal preference it's entirely up to you if you want to run that risk that's not what this video is about as I'm sure you're well aware so here we are in our group riding situation two of our everyday family saloons that you see readily every day whilst you're riding so normal group formation everybody slows down to the speed of the traffic now i always slow down and match the speed of the traffic before i start filtering i would automatically move towards the center line but i wouldn't cross the center line if i have continuously moving opposing traffic nine times out of ten certainly in the northeast of england you will find that the cars that you are overtaking will see you and will move across slightly and again occasionally opposing traffic will as well. So as the lead bike starts to filter through, bearing in mind that the speed is now drastically reduced ordinarily around that 10-15 miles an hour, certainly sub 20 miles an hour for me, again personal preference only, bike number one can start to execute the filter maneuver, bike number two can do likewise but he does leave a much greater gap than you ordinarily would if you were only riding at 15 20 miles an hour together and the reason being is ideally you want to leave a minimum of one car gap between the bike that is in front of you whether that's the lead bike number one to two two to three four to five and so on and so forth because if for some reason i.e a bus or a larger object moves up the opposing lane bike number one may have to ease across a little bit and the last place you want to be 
as they say when you're doing your police observed rides is you don't want to be the meat in the sandwich as it were because if this McLaren P1 were a bus for example he would occupy much more of the lane space that he's in and likewise this vehicle may or may not have seen you and he may be occupying considerably more space on the carriageway than you would ideally like so clearly you can see if your road positioning is here you are not the meat in the sandwich and you have got an option to ease back across into the very small gap granted that would be between the vehicles that you are filtering through. Not to forget our Beamer at the back there. We can't forget our BMW riders. Let's reposition our cars as per normal. So our Honda guy, he would go filtering off as normal, out of shot, typical Hondas. Suzuki, he would also do likewise. And our BM, and you can clearly see there in a moving dynamic how we're leaving one car space between bikes as we're filtering through. Because at the end of the day, guys, for me, filtering is just progression through traffic. It's not a race, it's not an arcade game, it is just progression through traffic. We are very fortunate at bikers that we don't have to sit in our tin boxes as cars. Close the door in the McLaren, typical BMW wiping out. Um, and we can make progress through traffic. Okay, now then the final thing here, just a little bit tongue in cheek, but the final thing to say on this video is if you are involved in group rides, whether it's two, three, four, or even 20, 30 bikes, the key element is fundamentally ride at your own pace. Do not try to match anybody else's pace and certainly do not ride out of your own comfort zone. You'll see our bike spaced evenly here. This is how you should be riding. It's all about fun. It's all about enjoyment. So. The last thing for me to do to say to you guys is thank you, <laughs> sorry Suzuki, thank you very much for your company. If you haven't done so already, then please hit the subscribe button and don't forget to click the bell notification to be notified every time I make an upload. So from these guys on the bikes and from my kids who have kindly loaned me all of the props for this video, wherever you are guys, whatever you're doing, keep it safe, keep it shiny side up, and we will catch you for the next one. Thank you, bye, enjoy your group rides guys, bye.